Okay, so we've talked about how to simplify um, <clears throat> problems where we apply tools like conservation of mass. Um, let's actually apply those to solve some actual problems where we try to learn and predict how systems are going to behave, because that's the whole point of engineering, right? This is one of my favorite example problems of all time. Um, and this problem is what happens if a bowling ball falls on a ketchup packet? How fast does the ketchup packet exit that bowling ball? So if I were to ask you that, you don't have quite the tools we need to do in order to do a really um, an accurate analysis of this problem. So we're going to do what we can, and we're going to ask ourselves what model do we have that will allow us to relate changes in volume to changes in velocity. We're going to assume that the bowling ball is falling from one meter and that its velocity does not change once it starts hitting the packet. Now, obviously, that's not a great assumption, but that's what we're going to assume in order to actually solve it. Um, yeah. So, uh, let's talk about what this looks like. We're going to assume our check ketchup packet is equal to a rectangle, basically. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, let's use red. Um, the density of ketchup is 1,400 kilograms per meter cubed, and yes, that is the actual density of ketchup. Um, the packet is one millimeter thick by three centimeters into the page by five centimeters long, and we're going to assume that there is a one millimeter by one millimeter hole in the end of it, just like this, okay, for the ketchup to exit. And we're going to we're going to assume that this models a small tear in the ketchup packet. All right, so what model will allow us to relate changes in volume to changes in velocity? And the answer is conservation of mass. Um, so our first equation that we're going to write down is 1. We have 0 is equal to the d dt of the integral of our control volume of rho dv plus integral over control surface of rho w dot n hat dA. Great. Now um, we need to pick a control volume. So we're going to draw our control volume in red. And I'm going to pick a control volume that is just on the inside of this ketchup packet. Okay, so we picked a control volume. What simplifying assumptions are we going to make? One is that density is equal to a constant. Two is uniform flow, or B. And remember, the combination of these two allows us to not have to do this integral here, the second integral in the conservation of mass equation. Um, and we're going to also assume, we'll just make this explicit, and we always want to make our assumptions explicit because it helps our future coworkers and also the graders, um, that the ball velocity is equal to a constant um, while squishing the packet. Cool. Now step three, we solve it. All right, so uh, one to two, we have zero is equal to, well, our density is a constant, so we can pull it outside of our integral. And the integral of our, sorry, of d dt of the integral of our volume. So this is really the rate of change of our volume times our density is going to be equal to or is is added to our um, remember we we've made assumptions a b a and b which allow us to get rid of this integral so we're going to say a and b um, is equal to rho times v exit times um, 
A exit. Great. This part right here is really the integral of D, integral of our control volume over dV is really just the volume of our control volume. And if we take the derivative of that with respect to time, like I said, this is just equal to zero is equal to two to three here. Let's get our keep our notation good. Is equal to rho dV dt plus rho v exit a exit. And remember, our fluid is leaving our control volume, so our dot product is positive, right? We all remember the mnemonic. Um, this volume, though, nothing is really changing but the height. So uh, 3 to 4, 0 is equal to, um, well, actually, let's just write this right now. Let's just say equation 4 is dv dt is equal to, um, length times width times dh dt. Okay, where dh dt is actually equal to the velocity of the ball. Okay, which is equal to negative 4.42 meters per second. Okay, so 3 plus 4 gives us um, into 5 gives us that 0 is equal to rho times length times width times the ball plus rho times v exit times um, a exit. And we can cancel out our rows and we know v ball, it's fell from 1 meter so we know exactly what the velocity is. We know the length and width of the, the ketchup packet we know the area of the exit. We just don't just don't know the v of the exit. So four to five, um, we can say zero is equal to zero point zero three meters times zero point zero five meters times negative four point four three meters per second plus v exit times um, 0 0.001 meters squared. That's our area of our exit right there. And we can solve for V exit and we find out that V exit is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the third meters per second. And here is where I usually hope that there's some people who participate in NanoSat or in the classroom. It doesn't really work when we're all watching the video at different times. But the exit um, exit velocity of Earth is about um, well, it's it's 11 kilometers per second, but. Um, is, is 11,000 meters per second. So uh, we are on the order of the escape velocity of Earth for ketchup exiting this ketchup packet. What did we do wrong, right? What did we do wrong? Well, let's, for a moment, let's, let's do some, um, some post analysis, if you will, and let's estimate the pressure using Bernoulli's. So if we estimate the pressure we're using Bernoulli's, we have to have a uh, a uh, what's it called streamline. So we're going to pick a streamline that exits just outside of the packet and starts inside of the packet, well inside the packet. So the velocity is basically zero. And if we write down Bernoulli's here, we see that um, P1. We're going to call this equation six. P1 over rho plus v1 squared over 2 plus g z1 is equal to p2 over rho plus v2 squared over 2 plus g z2. We don't have much change in height within our ketchup packet, so we can cancel out our height. v1 is intentionally chosen inside of the packet, so the velocity is basically equal to 0. v2 we know. v2 is equal to 6.63 uh, times 10 to the third meters per second. 
P2 is P atmospheric, but we're doing gauge. So let's go up here and do gauge pressure. D gauge pressure. And we can just go equal to zero due to D. And that means we're looking for the pressure one inside of the ketchup packet. So P1 is equal to rho V2 squared over two, which is equal to um, 1400 kilograms per meter cubed times 6.63 times 10 to the third meters per second squared divided by two, which you can already tell is gonna be a large number and that's equal to 3.0 times 10 to the 10th Pascals. So, is that high? Three times 10 to the 10th Pascals. Atmospheric pressure is one times 10 to the fifth Pascals. So this is 100, 300,000 times higher than um, Earth's atmospheric pressure. So yeah, it's, it's ridiculously high. And there is not a ketchup packet on the face of the planet which can withstand that pressure. So let's pause real quick and do a little bit of review. We applied conservation of mass just like we were taught to. We, we drew a control volume, applied conservation of mass. We realized that when the bowling ball was falling down, the bowling ball is going to change the volume of the control volume. And we could use that when we relate it to the amount, the mass flux leaving the control volume to solve for the velocity of the ketchup leaving the control volume. So we did that, we applied all these things, we made some assumptions and it turns out they were terrible assumptions, but we assumed that density is equal to a constant, that's a good assumption, uniform flow, pretty good, ball velocity is equal to a constant while squishing the packet, that's not a good assumption, I don't know how to draw not good, maybe that. Um, and we assumed gauge pressure. We found out that the pressure inside it is gigantic. So the pressure is going to push back against the bowling ball and is going to slow it down. So it turns out the assumption we made that was bad was this one. Now we can solve this problem by relaxing that assumption that the ball moves at a constant V. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. Okay. Um, but if you feel like that's going to be too much of a complication, don't worry about it. Um, but we can actually see what the velocity of the um, exit ketchup is going to be as a function of the distance that the bowling ball moves. Okay? Great.